Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Robin Wishney, and I am the Executive Director of the Jewish Federation of Somerset, Hunterdon, and Warren Counties. I have one housekeeping item before we begin. This program is being presented as a webinar. Therefore, if you have questions, we encourage you to post them in the chat, and we will answer them towards the end of the program. So it is my pleasure to welcome you this morning to a virtual tour of one of our Federation's favorite beneficiaries in Israel, Yemen Or Youth Village. Many of you have traveled to Yemen Ord with our Federation. We visit every time we go to Israel as a community, and you have seen firsthand the impact you have on the lives of the young people in the village. Yemen Ord is one of many organizations in Israel that are positively impacted every time you make a gift to our Federation. And we believe that it's important, exciting, and heartwarming to see what your philanthropy actually does, whose lives it affects, what it means for the Jewish people, and how it furthers our collective mission of tikkun olam. So without further ado, I would like to introduce George Blank, who is a past president and current board member of our federation, as well as past president of Impact Israel, which is the American organization supporting the work of Yemen Ord and their educational initiative called The Village Way. George? Thank you, Robin, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us. <clears throat> this morning, we have a really treat for you. We're going to be having a virtual tour and uh, a leadership discussion uh, at one of the most successful and now famous 
educational institution in Israel, the Yamin or Children's Village. Uh, it is a high school for youth at risk from all around the world. And uh, in a few minutes, Harriet is going to introduce it to you with some personal uh, reflections. But first, I'd like to take a few minutes to speak about our federation, the Federation of Sun Lissot, Hunter and Warren County. And I want to thank our new president, Ellen Teller, and uh, our executive director, Robin Wishney, for this uh, privilege. You know, this year, our federation is uh, celebrating its 60th anniversary. Yet uh, some in our community uh, question and are not certain about what the purpose and what the mission of the federation. Well, the federation of every, the mission of every federation is really the same. And it's really the statement that has kept the Jewish people alive and vibrant for some 3,500 years. And that is, we are responsible for each other and we have to take care of each other. So let me give you an example. A hundred years ago, in Zeshuv, Poland, where my family is from, the Jewish community was poor and it was um, surrounded by a very large and somewhat hostile Christian community. There were very few successful people in the Jewish community um, because of the constraints uh, on Jews in, in the Polish society. My great-grandfather, Asher Yehuda Silber, happened to be one of the few wealthy people in the community. So it was pretty obvious for him that he had the responsibility to give and the responsibility to get others to give. So for example, if someone got ill, if someone was marrying off a daughter, they needed a loan, it was provided. You might say that my great-grandfather, Asher Yehuda Silber, was the president of the Jewish Federation of Jeshuv. But Ellen, it was definitely not a two-year term. So fast forward, and Jews in that time really understood that if we didn't take care of each other, nobody else will. So fast forward now to the current modern era of opportunity and openness. Despite all of that in our society, there are people that are, have really strong needs in our community and in less fortunate communities all around the world. Uh, and that's where the, the Federation comes in. So in 2020, as you know, we had a major emer coronavirus uh, caused emergency and our communities hurt so badly that we had to run a special cam emergency campaign uh, for the relief of our agencies. It was uh, headed by our past president, Eric Levitsky, Federation president, the founding president of our JCC, Duran Steger, and it had many support of many community leaders like Wally Yosefat. And it raised over $350,000. In total last year, our federation raised a record $1 million and we used it to support our JCC, the Jewish Family Service. We uh, provided all the personal protective gear at our senior living and nursing home. Um, and as uh, our federation is now growing, we're, we're starting to provide more in terms of uh, scholarship for needy families for camp, uh, the Holocaust studies program, which we have been supporting and we're increasing our support of that. Um, the support of our synagogues for education and other activities uh, and extending our uh, support of overseas Jewish needs, including Yamin Ord, Impact Israel. So, um, to do this and to increase this, we need the support of every Jewish family in our area. And um, hopefully today's program will help to show why. And now Harriet, if you're not busy soliciting somebody on the telephone, tell us a little bit more about Yamin Ord. Thank you, George. In 1990, 30 years ago, George was president of our federation when we went to our first federation mission to Israel. The trip was full of amazing highlights, but the one that has the most lasting and dramatic impact on our lives was our stop at the Yemin Ord Youth Village, a high school in the Carmel Mountains. It was the height of the Ethiopian immigration, 
many teens came to Israel having experienced long and arduous trips, often losing parents and other family members along the way. Yamin Ord became their home, a place to learn not only academic studies, but their capabilities, their self-worth, immigrants trying to find themselves in this new country. The director at the time was Dr. Heim Perry, <clears throat> who created a methodology which took these teens, as he said, from brokenness to wholeness. He showed us how through art, music, and drama, these young people could find a way to express themselves. Visually, we saw how they advanced from darkness to light, and they have had remarkable results over the past 30 years, developing future mayors, Knesset members, architects, lawyers, and many advanced military officers. Today, the mix of students has changed with about 30% Ethiopian teens, with the 30% 30, 30 Ethiopians, teens from the former Soviet Union, Brazil, and France, where these days being Jewish can provide new challenges, and even some students from India. All of them come with serious challenges and self-doubt, with little faith in themselves or security that the staff are there to really help them. It takes some time for these teens to understand that not only are they going to learn and to heal, but to learn that they are worthy of setting dreams for their lives and how to fulfill them. Once they graduate, they always have a home at Yamin Ord and the staff remains involved with them <clears throat> being there for their future life special moments, induction into the IDF, university graduations, weddings and the like. With a method that has been shown so much success the leaders of the staff have created a form of this methodology, Derek Kfar, the village way, to use in schools and villages around Israel, always for youth at risk. To date, they have set this up in 60 schools around the country, helping over 25,000 teens. The teachers in these schools have taken a whole new approach and dedication in efforts to help their students. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have a 30-year relationship with Yamin Ord the leadership, the staff, and the students. We visit there on every trip to Israel, and I'm happy to introduce you to this special place. I hope you have the opportunity to visit there as well. We are now here at the viewpoint. Every Friday, all the kids will be sitting here, dressed in white, beautifully, watching the sunset, uh, welcoming the Shabbat, and we will be talking about the weekly Torah reading, which we call the Torah Torah therapy. We take one sentence from the, the weekly Torah reading, and we make it the mantra of the week. We take the value of that sentence, and we empower the kids <laughs> using that value. So the the focus in Yemen Ord is on the values of Judaism. This is our synagogue, a beautiful, beautiful synagogue. Besides the amazing architecture, it's also a place where you come only, not only for prayers, but also for every community event. Another thing that we emphasize here in Yemen Ord is the Tikkun Olam programs. Every week, kids go outside and volunteer outside of the village. Because we, as we say to the kids, we're here for you, we also say to them, we expect of you. We expect of you to be the best that you can be. We are now in one of the most important places in the village, and we, it's where we bring the new kids. At the beginning of the year, we will be telling to the new kids, look at the blue roofs. This is where the graduates live. Very important that we say from the beginning to the new kids who come here with their emotions and the confusion of where am I to make sure that from the beginning we say to them look at the, look at these homes if you ever need us after graduating we're still here this is one of the new homes here in, in the village the Ben Gurion home they have here uh, a kitchenette where the house mother can cook for them they have here a library a mini library where they can sit for uh, homework for do uh, read books and they also have a balcony where they can sit and relax with coffee with friends and uh, the idea is really to give the kids a sense of home. Welcome to the model of an Ethiopian home. 
We built in Yemenwood a model of an Ethiopian home to connect the kids to their heritage and their culture. We strongly believe that they should share their culture and their heritage and that they should be, feel proud of who they are. This is our new library. We have it uh, during school and after school. It's in the middle of the village between school and the living area. It's, they have seating area, okay, where they can sit and read. Right now, we're doing what the kids are doing every morning, walking from living area, from the dining room, all the way to school. The same in doing lunch. They eat lunch and then they go back to school. Every morning, the principal of the school stands here and welcome the kids. It's another way of seeing the kids. The kids need to be seen. Whether they say that or not, they would like to be seen. That's the, the essence of Yemen world. Where the kids study here physics, robotics, chemistry, biology. Um, my name is Sophia. It's my third year in New York. And the moment that I came here and the first time that I was here, I just fell in love with the view. What's your biggest dream? To be an inventor that invented something that changed the world. Wow. So good. You said first in Yemen world. Here in the Ecological Center, everything that you see here was made by the kids and with the kids. And we have here wood shop, and metal shop. And if you could smell, you could also smell the goats. In Yemen, we have uh, 430 kids from France, from former Soviet Union, from Ethiopia, from Brazil, and Israeli born. All of them found their way to Yemen. Our job here is to help them find their greatness, find the way to empower themselves, that they can be great, and that they are worthy of investing in themselves. Shalom. Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope that in the future, in the very near future, uh, I'll be able to give you a proper tour around the village. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I hope to give uh, the feeling of touring here in the in the main world. Um, my name is Rocheli. I didn't say it in the video, <laughs> um, but um, the main world for me is more than a place of work. I live here with my four children and my husband. Uh, this is my home. And uh, I'm privileged enough, I'm very privileged to be part of an amazing educational philosophy that empowers kids from a state of mind of survival to state of mind of leadership. Kids who come here at the age of 14, 15, from the ninth grade, feeling overwhelmed with so many challenges, leave the mean world after understanding that they are worthy to invest in themselves, that they are strong enough, that they are part of the solution of society and not part of the problem. Our kids in the mean world have so many challenges and they can, and thanks to our amazing educators, they strongly, slowly, but, but surely start to believe in themselves. And how do they do it? Our educators, and especially now with the coronavirus, our educators are available to the kids every day. There are 24 kids in every home. There are uh, counselors who are being representative of parental homeless who are just like a parent, are the ones who wake them up in the morning, send them back, uh, send them to, to uh, the dining room to eat and then to school. And then after school, they welcome back and they help them uh, find a program after uh, in the afternoon that they will take part to empower themselves as much as possible. Uh, our job doesn't doesn't end at the end of four years. Our job is still even after the kids graduate because our message and now that I saw the um, the, the clip of the, of the Federation, I see that it's the, uh, the same message, that our job is we're with you all the way. And maybe that's why we are good friends. <laughs> um, we are with the, with the kids 
from the man moon they enter the the gates of the main world until they say they don't they don't need us and even th during these these days we will still available to the graduates we called every graduate to see how they are doing during these corona times we uh in this fourth lockdown this is the fourth lockdown in israel we went uh to the kids homes to see how they are doing and those who could not stay in their homes we brought them back to Yaminor because we our message is we are here for you we're not oh, we're not closed for anything for any holiday we're not closed especially for uh days like this and i really really hope that in the future you will be able to meet uh the kids and uh, i just want to say that in Yamino, in 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 Sorry, I just want to say that what we do in Yemen Org is so important that um, we are now taking this to other places. And I would like to introduce you to Susan, who is helping to take our educational philosophy to 60 other educational uh, communities around Israel. Shalom. Thank you, Acheli. Thank you, Rocheli. Hello. Susan, we can hear you. Oh, oh sorry. Okay, I, I just couldn't see it myself, sorry. Uh, so my name is Susan and I've had the privilege and responsibility, um, the deputy director here of being part of the leadership here for the last 23 years. And uh, as you'll see by the slide we're gonna put up uh, now, there's a lot of diversity as Harriet had mentioned at the beginning among who the kids are here uh, in the village. And that diversity actually changes every year. This is of 2021, but we've had kids, you know, years ago, 30 years ago, that more Ethiopian depending upon the needs of the Jewish people so that there should be no unclaimed Jewish child here in the village. And one of the wonderful privileges that I've had and the rest of our team is we get to see the graduates from the day that they come and then as the kids are here and then we get to watch them as graduates and we get to see them grow and to develop. Uh, and here, if you just look at this screen, you know, I, I saw before, you know, what, what the screen is and you, you see here that we have a graduate, the guy in the Navy cap is Roy Yi, a kid who came here as an orphan, uh, having lost his mother when he had finally was able to come to Israel after waiting for many years. He then went on to after Yamino to the Technion. He now is a mechanical engineer and working in the Navy as an officer and giving back all the time. The other man here that you see with the great big smile is McConant and he's the head of one of our pre-army leadership programs. On the bottom, you see Sandra, who just got married. Actually, I called up Harriet and George, who are long friends of ours, and at her wedding, while well, I was at her wedding, and she is now studying biochemistry. There's another slide, Edin is up there, who's an officer who's studying in the IDF now. We have Shimon Solomon up there, who was a Knesset member, a head of a village, and Atalik and we got, and Sandro uh, who's working in Google and all of our graduates are, are with us or, or know that they can come back to the village. Not all of them are doing incredibly well like these kids, but all of them know that they have a backing just like you and in your community and in your families, your kids know that they can always come home that is what's happening with our graduates, that they know that they have a backing and that they can come back and we're with them and we're developing this and we're doing this. And years ago, we started with Haifa University actually did an evaluation study. And what did we see? We saw that most of our graduates over 20 years of graduates were happy. 90% of them said that they were happy. 70 cent were giving back. They were giving back. They were doing well. And that started ticking off ideas in our head. And then we were confronted with the very harsh reality that 400,000 Israelis are defined at, at, at risk. 
Now in a small country like ours, that is not okay. And what we did is together with our partners, together based on that methodology that, that was referred to before that we have, if you can see above my head, the educational blueprint, we have 10 components. We worked on writing down the blueprint of our methodology and we have not now gone out. If Jerry, if you can show the next slide of Village Way Educational Initiatives, of what we're doing in Israel. And as Harriet had said, we are now this year in 61 educational communities. We're in youth villages, we're in, we're in high schools, all for at-risk population in Jewish schools, in ultra-religious schools, working with the Druze, working with the Arab community, with the Bedouin. We're working with all the different communities. They sit here together in forums and you see people from the different communities, even though our agenda is, is taking the mindset from, from survival to leadership, we also have another agenda of, of the different parts of society working together, of seeing a light onto the nations and, and, and it's happening. And it's happening here and we're excited about it. We're also working uh, with the security system in Israel. We have a, a book that is now a bestseller in Israel that's actually being translated. And our hope is to bring this methodology we are so grateful to you and your community for making sure the flagship of Yamin Art remains strong and vital. And with this, we're able to take the think tank and educators and make a difference to what's happening around Israeli society. It's social justice in the work. Our kids, our graduates, in not only in Yaminot, the 25,000 graduates, over 25,000 kids that we're working with now in Israel, all know that we need you to be here to make society that much better. Uh, we wish you could all be here. That'll hopefully happen in the future. Um, but we didn't want to leave today without giving you a touch of our kids. So one is our message to you is a lot of health. We know that you, like the rest of the world, we're all dealing with the pandemic. So we're praying for health and we're also praying for peace. So I'd like to share with you the Yamino Choir as they sing Salam for peace. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that beautiful song with us. Um, and uh, I can't make this up that I'm tearing up right now. I'm Shada Sherman. I am, I work for the Jewish Federation of Somerset at Hunterdon and Warren counties. And we wanna thank you for, for your warm welcome to Yemi Nord. Uh, and I think I, I can speak for, for all of us. Uh, there's a, you know, at least a uh, hundred people on this morning with us at all the homes that are here on Zoom and uh, we, we really can't wait to be here uh, as soon as possible. Um, but I feel like we were there with you this morning. Um, so I'll be leading the, the Q&A uh, today and um, welcome back to, to George and, and, and Robin as well. Um, we have a couple of questions, but I wanna encourage our attendees out there in Somerset, Hunter and Warren counties and beyond to ask questions in the chat. Um, and so I'll start with our first question. 
Um, how do, and, and please feel free, you know, I hope both of you will answer one of you, whatever works best for you. Um, that's what's great about doing this live. So how do the kids, the participants, uh, find Yemen Ord? Um, and is there an application or screening process for participants? The, the criteria to be at Yemen Ord is for those who need Yemen Ord. You know, we always say if there is a solution in the community, then they should say, stay in the community. So kids who come to Yemen Ord come from different, you know, uh, uh, routes to a different uh, uh, programs uh, through Jewish agency or welfare agencies or referrals by, by social workers. But it is really to answer the needs for those who need us. And it is, it is, a, it is our mantra to make sure that it is for those who need us because Yamin or as much as, you know, it is physically an institution. And we believe that kids should stay with their families in the community if there is a solution. And if not, then we'll, we'll try our best to be the next best solution. Thank you. So um, a, another question uh, that came up is, uh, do the students get to go home for Shabbat? Uh, and other holidays, um, or can they stay at the village the whole time? And I know you mentioned, I was really moved, you know, that you mentioned that holiday pandemic, you know, the, the village is there for them. So I'd love to hear what's a typical year another, like. Another, so another core element of our philosophy uh, methodology is that we strongly believe in connecting their kids to their past, their heritage, their families to, uh, and, we, those who have families, we encourage them to go and visit their families. And it can be only one parent, it can be not parents, but relatives, but to be connected to their community. And uh, those who don't have them, they stay here. In, in different times, we would also find host families around Israel to, um, to host them uh, during holidays because uh, you mean what, you know, we're here and we're available, but we do encourage them to go and visit their families. During this time, those who cannot be there, we have about 100 kids who don't have any family in Israel. That you mean, or is the only place they have, they have in Israel. And during the corona time, we also during the lockdown, at the Ministry of Education said to send them to their families. We found also that uh, there are social needs, social workers report the uh, kids who really need us and who are not safe at home. And it was our job to um, find solution to them and to bring them back. So since we're, we're on the, the topic of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, how has, how has Yemenor been handling uh, the coronavirus on campus? Um, of course, this question is going to come up. Um, you know, how, how is it, you know, having people come back and forth? Have you kind of created a health bubble? We oh, are, answer that. How it is. <laughs> so I, uh, I can say it's really been, ah, uh, like the rest of the world, <laughs> so problematic in how, you, what we say here all the time is, we have so little time, so little, it, it's frightening even to think of it, how little time we have to try to make a transformation. You know, we have four years, sometimes only three years, and you want to go from what Kelly talked to survival to leadership and, and to build up your self-esteem and to teach Hebrew and to give all that you have to know and the Jewish values and the values and self-esteem and all, and all that in so little time. And then you have this corona. So part of what we try to do is create the community. And those of you who have been here, those of you who got the tour now, you see we have a campus and you walk around and there's a lot of extracurriculum activity. And now there's the corona. So what we've done, and it's changed all the time, is we work in, in unit. We call them uh, 
like pods I think that's how you say I love when I forget my English <laughs> a girl from Brooklyn originally so we work in pods where the kids are now when it's worse statistics in Israel we're staying in our homes we're studying in our homes we have the teachers coming in working with them living there bringing the food in the kids are going you know mad from it but we're trying to protect them and giving them what they need at the worst of the worst of times when the health when the Ministry of Education we're part of Ministry of Education tells us we have to send some of the kids home because there's too many in the village those who have homes in Israel which is only part of them we do send home and then we're on zoom we're in constant communication with them we have the social workers our informal educations being in touch with them bringing packages to them trying to really be in touch with them now that they're back in the village and as soon as we can open it up a little we're working and opening up and keeping paths now we have a new thing where we're going to have masks the ninth grade is one color mass, uh, you know, it's not a new thing mass, but you know, to walk around and try to keep them so that when we do get infected, which has ha happened in the last weeks, we had our first time that some of the kids, there was a few kids with Corona and a few, uh, at least we kept it that there was only a, a small group of people who had to go into quarantine because we we're having different colors for the different groups. So we're constantly working on it. What we're very grateful to is that as you probably read in Israel, and I wish it upon you all soon, that there is vaccination now in Israel. So uh, first it was for people 60 and older. The next group of people after the health workers that got to do it was the educators. So now our teams here in Yeminod and, and the other villages and high schools are able to have the vaccines and hopefully we'll, we'll be out of this and wishing that to the same to you, our partners in the not too distant future. Thank you. And Rachele, did you wanna weigh in or? Okay. <laughs> Um, so, so thanks for sharing that. I think that um, that was a really, you know, well-rounded answer because there, there are actually quite a few questions related, of course, um, and, and out of concern and, and care for, for you as our partners. Um, the, the next sort of sort of idea that, that I think Yemen mean, or highlights is diversity um, and uh, the uniqueness of having teens from all over the world. Stacey Friedlander, uh, one of our community leaders who Got had the chance to visit uh, just this past February, right before the shutdown, because our community was there. Um, uh, she's hoping to hear from Racheli about the uniqueness of having teenagers from all over the world living together in one place um, and, and how you think this helps to bridge global empathy. You're muted. You're still muted, Racheli. So, okay, now, yes. Okay. Uh, it is very unique to, to have teens from all over the world. Um, we, have, uh, we have staff who's bilingual for, you know, kids from, from Brazil, kids from the former Soviet Union, kids from, um, uh, kids from, from Ethiopia. And uh, all the kids who don't know Hebrew can study uh, which is intense Hebrew lessons and uh, and be part of the other class classes uh, at the beginning until they you know they are becoming part of the, the other classes and um, uh, I think there's a, a community vibe that happens here you know many of our um, Many of us, we have a celebration of the Ethiopian holiday, celebration of the Russian, Russian day, celebration of French day, and kids, you know, and, and of course we have the highlights of the, uh, the, the Edgar challenge hike of the 12 graders who are hiking for four days from Mount Arbel all the way to Yeminor, you know, from sea to sea, and they get to, to feel that they are part of the village slowly, slowly, that there is a Yeminoric language, <laughs> and not only, you know, Russian, Hebrew, or Brazil, or, uh, or sorry, Portuguese. Um, it is unique. It's beautiful to see. It's beautiful to see the connections that are being made. Uh, it's not easy. I have to say, it's not. Nothing is easy in your world. Uh, when you mix in a home, kids from France and kids from Ethiopia and kids from former Soviet Union, when they uh, they don't like each other at the beginning, and uh, then they start liking each other 
by finding common things. Sometimes the common thing can be that they don't like the same counselor. That's also a common thing, but they slowly get to learn and to uh, like each other and feeling that they are part of a community of meaning. And uh, the community of meaning is created in so many different ways. There are the immunologic events, and there are also sometimes the, pri the private events, you know, even if it's a, a birth celebration of the, the son of their counselor, and they're part of it. And they feel, wow, you know, I'm, I'm part of, of, his, uh, of his life because the counselors who work here, their, their life and the kid's life are intertwined with each other whether they like it or not, <laughs> but they are. And uh, uh, yes, we are trying to create a community of meaning and I think we're succeeding, but it's not easy. <laughs> Thank you. We had a, a question building on that, uh, thinking also about the village way, um, where, you know, how, how challenging has it been? What have some of the challenges and rewards been uh, and working with other communities, working with Arab Israelis and schools um, in an effort to, to make these connections? So I would say that one of the, the aspects that, you know, we've, a lot of us who've been working, the, the facilitators in the initiatives have been working with us. Many of them have been staff and working in the village for a long time. Israelis, you know, in Israeli society, I would say one of the wonderful surprises has been how that blueprint, you know, in the back here, which is now in Arabic, is now in Hebrew, is something that is adapted and, and cherished also in the Arab community in such a big, beautiful, deep way. Uh, I'll just give one example in, 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 in Akko, in uh, the, the director of, of the village, of the, of the school, it's not a village, but in, in the Akko town uh, was actually, who referred us to him, is actually the head of the Jewish school for at-risk kids. And when he and his team started to work and they started to understand what we're about and how to connect to the past and how to build leaders in the future, their initiative of understanding Tikkun Olam, which you so know well in Federation and all that you're, all of you are doing, and I was so impressed with what you were doing in your community there in New Jersey and around the world. And that's the same thing that he did. So the programs that they started in ACO is that their high school at-risk, at-risk kids, really at-risk kids, are now going out to Jewish elementary schools and working with the kids in Tikkun Olam programs and gardening. The other program that they started two years ago is that they have Jewish volunteers, Hebrew, teachers who are coming into their school and working at the kids when they need time out. So all, when we do, we have, I, I didn't, I can go into everything. We have forums that we have six different forums throughout the year where educators from, from Haredi schools, the ultra Orthodox and the Arab and the Jewish and the religious and non-religious are together. And you see that they're sharing ideas and have a common identity and a common vision of how to take this and build together a better society. And it's, it's exciting and it's breathtaking. I mean, it, it's really beautiful. Really exciting, thank Maybe you. Maybe George and Harriet wanna mention, they, they visited some of the communities. Harriet or George, if you wanna add something on that. So I was very impressed with the school up in Akko and with the dedication of the head of the school and the teachers that we spoke to. They're just loving the methodology and the ability they have to work with the kids and to see that they're making a difference. Yeah, we're dealing with a great deal of uh, social justice issues, particularly this year in America. So the Derek Vard Village Way Initiative that's in all these high schools is creating social justice. We walk into an all Arab school, which we visited some, we now have seven of them. They have exactly the same problems in their community as the Israelis have. Uh, with at-risk kids. And they are so grateful that we're investing a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to help them solve their problems. And they now feel important and equal in society. So when, when uh, Susan says 
you know, a just society leading that education leads society. That's exactly what we're doing. And, and by the way, um, what's so gratifying with this, we, we say this to all of our leaders that we bring. I know some of them are now the Federation young leaders are on this call. We say, you know, after you go through and you have these experiences, including Yaminor, but other experiences also in Israel, when you get on a plane, if you're a woman, you'll never have to wear high heels again because you find you're now six foot tall. And if you're a man, you're seven foot tall or six foot eight. Why? Because you realize that you're part of a very special people and people who have brought humanity to this world. And even today in the 21st century, we are bringing humanity to the world in the work that the Federation leaders do around, in our community around the world and in, in, the, work, in the work that Yemin does you mean or does in Israel creating a more just and more special society? Thank you. Uh, we have we have another question in the chat. Um, I think that that we're curious to know. I understand that you. It seems like you have a really big group of social workers uh, and and other support professionals who who are great role models and. Um, sources of resources for your students. Can you share a little bit about how Yamin Ord addresses issues related to socioeconomic differences, mental health issues, um, which is something, you know, growing even more because of the corona, but, uh, you know, what are some, some ways that you address challenges that might, that teens might be coming in with? Um, so, um... That, that's the essence of what we're doing is, is really how in a very, very short time, what we say is unlike, you know, you, you actually know it a lot of you from your own families or your own children or grandchildren. You want that in a sense of rebellion and, and the challenges come out when they're teenagers, because if it doesn't come out when they're teenagers, it comes out later in life. And we've seen that here. So we look at, you know, acting out as, as an opportunity. And, and that's hard for educators to feel. And we're working with that for everyone to understand that. But when we understand that, we make sure that there are therapeutic sessions where we see every kid that is in the community. We have group sessions where the informal educator that we was Kelly talking about, the people who are living here, like Kelly inside of the village and working with the kids is with a social worker who's not necessarily living here and they're looking with them. We're working on preventive, uh, on sexual issues, uh, on drug abuses, on, on, on depression, we have a psychiatrist here, and then we have individual therapy. And in the film that you, Rachele, you know, pointed out in the film when you saw the Echo Farm, what we're really trying to see, and like Harry talked about it also, is how from art and music and animals, there is not one way to get to any kid. And just when we have 430 kids here, our challenge is how we make sure that we see every single kid, we make sure what's going on with them, because sometimes actually, it's not only the kids who are acting out. Sometimes it's that strong kid who seems strong. I still have a very, you know, one of the hardest memories, hardest realities that live with me is one of our graduates who 14 years ago, who was very strong, one of our leaders, and after two years in the army shot himself. And, and, and that fear of what can we do to make sure that that never happens again. And what we do is all the time try to feel the pulse, try to make sure that the kids are dealing with their therapy, are talking about it. Then when a kid is leaving the village, it's not only what's happening here inside the village, but it's offering that same opportunity for therapists, for social workers, and being in touch and being in contact with us even for the next years until they say, we don't need you. And then there's a time that they don't need us so much, but to really be there during those years. I'll, I'll also add that uh, another work that uh, we are doing is that also um, therapy with the counselors to help, to help them. Many counselors are very young. Many counselors are, uh, living here and 24 seven available to the kids. And sometimes it's just too much. And 
the social workers work also with the counselors to understand how to read what the situation that they had with the, with, with the child. If a child throws the shoe at you when you woke him up in the morning, even though the night before he was very nice to you, why does he do it? And then slowly they start realize that, oh, this child had something in school or something at home before he came to the village. And maybe that's why, but it is always support system and uh, supporting the, the, the team that supports the kids. This way, you know, when you empower the, the counselors, when you work with them, it's easier for them to do the, the job. And, and also it's easier for them to, you know, to read the situation. I, I just want to add in that I, I don't want you to get the image that everything here is la la la, because it's so not. We're dealing with a lot of pain, a lot of issues, a lot of disappointment from where the kids are coming from, and, and, and a lot of challenges and in society in the greater but the idea is to bring them, these kids, all of them, in the message that you are worthwhile to invest in yourself. And once you realize that, then you'll go to therapy or you'll go to school or you'll make more of the lessons. Once you believe that, then you're willing to go on the path and to bring back the hope. Our job is to bring back the hope to these kids. And that's something that we're doing together. And by knowing, you know, when they see, you know, when you guys come and visit Debbie and others, you know, who come and visit and Robin and you bring the groups, they, it's a message also to them. It's not only people supporting them, but they say, hey, people from around the world care about us. And even when there was a fire here that we didn't talk about, but uh, you know, now it was 10 years ago, there was a fire that 22 buildings were burned down here. I was a wreck, <laughs> but the kids and the graduates weren't because they said, oh, there's people around the world to care about us and we're gonna be okay. And that's a very strong strong backing, just as Rachel was talking about the backing that we're giving to counselors. It's a backing that you give to us as leaders here to be able to go on and say, okay, we can really be there and be available for the kids because they really need us. And they have antennas and they can see who's really with you or not. Wow, thank you. Okay, we have, we have two more questions uh, left this morning. First is, uh, do you have a waiting list of students for typically for Yummy Ward. So, so what, what has happened, that's a great question. What That question is why we really developed Village Way Educational Initiatives, because there are other youth villages around Israel. There are the high schools at risk. As Rachel said so exact, you know, correctly, that if a kid can stay in their community, even if he's a new immigrant, better to stay with your family. So go to a high school and get the backing. So the idea of Yaminoad and other youth villages is really to be there for the kids that deserve it. There's the infrastructure that is here. And that is why Yaminoad is here. We're a, a religious, modern, orthodox, pluralistic environment. There's also secular schools. There's also now a Bedouin village that we're working with in the South. The idea is to find the right place for you, but to, to empower the other educational communities to have that same methodology and know how to be able to give the kids what they need, just like in Yamino it has. So every year we have to be, it's not so much of a wait list, but it's really to make the decision to, to make sure we get, reach the kids who really need us and to make, and to make those decisions as, as well as possible. Thank you. Okay, in an ideal world, tw summer 2022, can we visit Yami Nord? What can we do while we're there? And who should we be in touch with? Hi. <laughs> we to visit? Hi. <laughs> we're waiting for you. <laughs> we're waiting for you. Just know your group was the last visit, if I'm not mistaken, before this whole thing happened. Yes, we were. And you can <laughs> always come to Yami Nord with us because we never go to Israel without visiting Yemen Ord, and we go to Israel as a community regularly. So you can come with our federation. You can go yourself if you want, but you can absolutely come with our federation. We never miss a chance to visit Yemen Ord. Yep. So 
Maybe even before summer 2020. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, but if we can build, it's also important to say because you're coming from your community, which is that we look at your partners and you know all of you, I don't get to see everyone's face, but we look at you as our partners. You can be in touch with Racheli or with Robin or Shana or, or your team there and Ellen and uh, be in contact with us directly if you come with the Federation or not. And then we can really tell and make your visit. If someone wants to do sports with the kids, we can do sports. We can go to the Echo. You know, we can, we can have a talk with the kids. We can sometimes meet graduates. We really can make a tailor-made visit because we look at you as part of the extended Mishpacha family. We, we feel the same way about you, even though I'm just meeting you for the first time. <laughs> well, I, I'm not meeting you for the first time, and you are definitely part of our family. <laughs> and we thank the, Harriet and George for like bringing us into your extended family. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Um, I am going to invite up our wonderful Federation President, Ellen Keller. Uh, to wrap things up, and I hope you'll you'll stay on after uh, for the last few minutes. Once once Ellen is done speaking, we're going to play the music again. So if you want to stick around for a little dance party and some shalom salam, we'd love to have you. So go ahead, Ellen. Thank you so much, Shana, and thank you everyone for being here today. I am Ellen Teller, the privileged and proud president of our small but strong federation. And I'm so glad that everyone was here today to witness our dollars in action. My husband, Scott, and I had the privilege of being at Yemen Ord and meeting so many of the diverse population of young adults who are benefiting from our Federation dollars. Uh, I want to thank George and Harriet Blank for their leadership with respect to the Federation and Yemen Or, I want to thank Racheli and Susan for their time today, wishing everyone a Shavua Tov, and I hope that you have a good uh, week coming ahead. But I want to leave you with three words. Your gift matters. And if it's not clear from what we learned today about how our dollars help an outstanding institution in Israel. I don't know what I can tell you otherwise. Um, please consider continuing your support of our Federation as we continue to support and be committed to vulnerable populations, not just within our community, but globally. Thank you again for being here today. I wish you good health. I wish you safety. And I'm praying that we can all get back to Yemen Ord in short order. Please stay safe. Good day, everyone. Shalom Aleinu, O Devo Shalom Aleinu, O Devo Shalom